Hey everyone and welcome back to the Engineering Toolbox channel. So in this one I want to continue on talking about another type of control chart which is the X-bar and S-chart or standard deviation chart. So X-bar being the average of the subgroup data points and then the S or the sigma value here being calculated from the standard deviation of those subgroups. Now just a quick recap to show everybody else that's just tuning in uh, what we've done up until this point. We've created an IMR chart, which is an individual moving range value chart. So this is the individual values of the samples taken and then the moving range, so the difference between each data point as we go along. And then we actually went through and created a chart that'll conditionally format based on the data that's in this table. So this chart will dynamically format based on the control charting rules. So you can see these red data points are outside the control limits and then the yellow data points break one of the other um, seven control charting rules. And then we went through and created an X bar and R chart, which is the average of the subgroup data points and the range of those subgroup data points. The interesting thing about this video is that I showed you how to create this output table, which aggregates the data with the X bar value and the N count. And that was using Power Query. And we're going to be using Power Query again in this one. So I guess with that, let's just dive in and see how to create an X bar and S chart. So just for starters, here is our data. And you'll notice, and maybe you're curious, why we have this orientated like this, where each data point of each subgroup has its own row in this table. And you might be thinking, well, I, you know, I've usually seen data for control charts oriented like this, where we have each data point from each subgroup listed out in columns like this. But the limitation here, again, just real quick, is that um, you might have varying sample sizes. So if we have a column for each data point, then we're limited to the number of columns here. So if I have five columns for each data point, then I'm limited to only five columns. The advantage of doing it this way is that we can list out however many data points there are for each subgroup. So that's why we do that. So I'm just gonna go hide this. Like I said, we're gonna be using Power Query again. So what we wanna do is grab our data and then go to the data tab and click this from table or range. And this is all referring to some of the features or uh, commands for Power Query. And that's available in Excel 2016 or newer. And it's also available for download, I believe for Excel 2010 and newer. Um, so definitely check online and see if it's available for download for your version if you do not have it. Um, but you'll notice then once we click that, it loads our data into this Power Query editor. And this gives us some different functions and ways that we can kind of manipulate or transform the data. What we're looking for here is this group by function. And that'll allow us to subgroup or aggregate the data by subgroups or a group. And we want to switch to the advanced editor here. And we're gonna group by the subgroup, so the values here. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna aggregate the values in the I column based on the subgroup. So the first thing we wanna do is probably get the count, which is going to be notated as N, which is the number of samples in each group. So that'll just be the uh, count here. And then we'll add the X bar value, which is going to be the average of the I values, the individual values. And then we're gonna add a aggregation called SD for standard deviation. And you'll notice that that is not an option here. But what we can do is just take the average of i for now, but I'll show you how we can actually get the standard deviation. It's a little bit tricky, but we can go to this advanced editor here, and this actually opens up the query code, or the M code, I believe it's called, for Power Query. And then we can actually edit this and say, instead of average, if we just type in standard deviation, it'll actually take the sample standard deviation of the individual values for uh, each subgroup then. So hit done there. Oh, and I spelled it wrong. So we'll just go back into the editor and correct that. There we go, done. All right, so now we have the standard deviation, the average, and the count of data points in each subgroup. And that's all we need to go ahead and build our table. So what we can do now is hit this drop down, then click close and load to. And then this opens up another window here, which uh, gives us some options for where we can export the new table that we made. And we want to create a table in a new worksheet. So we'll just hit OK there. And then we get this table, which is the output of our aggregated data. Perfect. So the first thing that we can do is get the X bar bar value, which is going to be the grand mean or the average of all of our X bar values. Then let's find the SD bar. So the standard deviation bar, the average standard deviation. So we'll take the average of all of our standard deviation values. And then uh, what do we want to do next? Let's keep all this standard deviation stuff together. Next, let's calculate the sigma value. So with control charting, we don't just take the standard deviation and use that to calculate control limits. That's not technically correct, although it is one way to do it. Um, but with control charting, 
the more accurate or more useful way to do it is to calculate a estimated short-term standard deviation, which is going to be the average standard deviation. And then we're gonna take that and divide it by a value that we're gonna look up based on the count of these uh, data points in each samples. So we're gonna look up this N value from a table that I have already created here. And we're gonna grab that whole table. And then we're gonna look up this second column here. So it's gonna be the second column, the C4 constant and we're gonna do an exact match, close and enter. So this is our sigma value. Now, another little curveball. if you aren't already aware, with subgroup charts, we don't use a sigma value, we actually use a standard error value. The sigma value is the estimated short-term standard deviation of all the individual values. So all of these values, um, regardless of subgroup, and it's estimating that based on the average standard deviation. So this isn't actually what we use for control limits on the X-bar chart. What we need to calculate is the standard error. The standard error is a way of approximating what we would expect the distribution of the X bar values to be as we sample from this population, quote unquote. This isn't technically a population, but if we were to sample 10 data points repeatedly, we would expect the average of those 10 data points for each sample to fall within a certain distribution. And that's what a standard error is. I know that's kind of confusing, but it has to do with the central limit theorem. So do some reading on that if you're a little bit confused. So the standard error is going to be the sigma value, which is the estimated short-term standard deviation of all of our individual values divided by the square root of n. So that is our standard error, and that is the value that we'll use to calculate control limits. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to calculate all of the control limits and each one of the zones for the control chart. So I'll add a column called x bar bar plus one standard error. And that'll be exactly that. That'll be x bar bar plus one standard error. And we're gonna do that for plus one, two, three standard error and minus one, two, three standard errors. So that way we'll have our uh, six levels uh, for a control chart. So I just went ahead and added these six columns. There's one column for each standard error away from the x bar bar value. So plus one, two, three standard error and minus one, two, three. Uh, the minus three and plus three are your control limits. So let's get into the phone and just go ahead and do that. So we can hide this end column. We don't need that right now hide all these standard deviation and standard error columns. And what we can do is then just grab all this stuff and insert a line chart. And this is basically what our control chart would look like, or the foundations of it anyways. So this would be the X bar chart. And I always like to delete the lines, so let's do that. And I'm gonna format the rest of this afterwards. Um, stick around to the end if you wanna see how I do that. So now I have to unhide these columns because we're gonna use them again and watch our chart is gonna get all funky, but don't worry, we'll fix it. So next we need to calculate the standard deviation upper control limit and the standard deviation lower control limit. And again, we're gonna have to look up values from our tables. So it's gonna equal the standard deviation bar and then we're gonna multiply that by another VLOOKUP value. So we're gonna look up our N value from our constant table and we need to look up this eighth column. So this B4 value. So enter an eight, do an exact match, hit enter there. And this is our standard deviation upper control limit. And I'm just gonna copy this over and then I'll change this to a seven because for lower control limit, we just need this, uh, this B4 value, which would be the seven column in this table. So that's everything we need for data, at least for a basic control chart. So the first thing I'm gonna do is move the standard deviation, or the subgroup standard deviation values over here, and then the average subgroup standard deviation, and move that to the end as well. Um, and then we don't need the sigma or standard error anymore, so I'm gonna hide that. I'll hide this N value, and then if you wanted to, you could put it all in one chart like this, but I don't do it that way, it gets a little cluttered. Um, but really, this is our X bar chart and this is our S chart, but we don't wanna include the S chart data in our X bar chart, so we're just gonna go like that. So this is only the X bar relevant data. Um, so there's your control limits and all that stuff. Again, I'll do the formatting in a bit, but to get the S chart, we're just gonna grab our subgroup titles here and then all the standard deviation relevant data, um, the control limits and so forth. And there we go. There's the foundations for our S chart. And if you wanna see how I format this, that's what I'll be doing now, so stick around. Otherwise, thank you for watching. So first of all, I always just right click on any data series and go to format data series. I wanna to go to this format tab and then I wanna click solid line, but I'm gonna give it a red fill and I'm gonna make this 1.5. Do the same thing here, 1.5 width, red, Center line will make this black 1.5. The dash type will be this um, long, da long dash dot, which kind of looks like a center line. And then for this one, I use this very thin dotted line. 
and I make that black so it's barely visible that way it doesn't really clutter too much up but you can still see the kind of the zone lines. And then for the second standard error level we'll use this square dot format and again go to 1.5 make that black and this will be the thin dotted line 1.5 sorry one point and then again for the second standard error level we will select that dash type and 1.5 thickness and make that black. Uh, there we go. That's starting to look like something. So for the line, we're going to go solid line and it automatically selected black. I like to make this really thin and then add um, a built-in marker. We'll do it as a square type. I know you probably saw my other videos with the round type, but you can do this however you want. Um, the fill will be black and then the border I like to do white so that it kind of um, looks like the lines are a little bit detached from the data points. Looks like mini tab if you've ever used that. So that is our X bar chart and really we'll just do the same thing here for the S chart. So the control limits will make red 1.5 solid line, um, red 1.5 center line 1.5 dotted black and then again we want to add built-in markers square make them seven fill black border white and then the line we want to make sure solid line black and we'll make this nice and thin there we go there's our x bar and s chart now just very quickly to show you guys why we went through this extra trouble of setting up these tables if we go back to our original data set and then i'm actually just going to completely delete all of our data if i go back to this output table and i go to the data tab and i hit refresh it completely clears all that out so you can see that they're linked but then if I go in and I copy this new data set and I just paste that in there, we have a completely new data set. So just imagine that your template is set up so you have this table, you drop in your data, come over to this other tab, you hit refresh, and then boom, you have yourself a control chart. Now again, I'll remind you, if you want to see how to conditionally format these data points um, based on the control charting rules, so if you want this point to automatically format red because it's outside the control limits, um, go back and watch my IMR conditional control charting uh, video where I show you how to set up a table that'll actually display data dynamically based on the control charting rules. And that about does it for the X bar and S chart. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe if you want to catch more on control charting and other topics like engineering software and more data analysis tools. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.